there and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. So today we are going to be looking at the five lowest rated foundations available at Sephora and I'm going to give you my best guesses based on the formula why people do not like these. We're only going to be looking at liquid foundations and we're only going to be looking at ones that had more than like 50 reviews just so there's actually some consensus from people that this is not a good product. So the number five, so this is the fifth worst one, is the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Pure Brightening Serum Foundation Broad Spectrum SPF 20. So let's look at some of the reviews that are here. I can't use this at all. I wanted to like it. It looked okay in the store, but I quickly realized that no matter how moisturized and exfoliated my skin was, this dries flaky and looks terrible. Then another one said this product is fine, just fine. I bought it per the recommendation of an employee, and although I told her I had oily skin, she assured me this would be fine. And it is, but you do get shiny and not a nice glowy summer way. I am not crazy about the smell because it's oily. It kind of went rancid very quickly. And someone said it's very light to sheer and they had to apply a lot to get the coverage they wanted. And how, and it did not cover well despite how much foundation they used. And the box says there's no fragrance, but it has a weird clay-like smell to it, which made their nose stuffy. And it did not brighten up their face, but it made them look dull looking. So the consistency is that it made people feel flaky. They got oily throughout the day. The smell seems to be a factor. So this is what happens sometimes when there's not a fragrance added to mask the smell. Sometimes fragrance is added for the sole purpose of just masking smell. Otherwise, it does kind of smell like Play-Doh sometimes, depending on what ingredients are in there. Some people would prefer not to have the fragrance and deal with that funky smell. Other people would just rather have the fragrance and not have to deal with that smell. That's a personal preference there. So the first ingredient is capric caprylic triglyceride. Now this is a very, very light weight emollient. It's actually less dense than water. So that could contribute to the feeling of it being sheer. So it probably wasn't such a good idea to use such a lightweight emollient. I probably would have used something else. There's also what the, is called coconut alkanes in here. And it's supposed to be a replacement for silicones. I think particularly volatile silicones like cyclopentasiloxane. It seems to not have lived up to that. It seems people are having a hard time spreading it, that it's that it's clinging to dry spots. And this is the only formula I've seen it in. And this and the only information I could find on coconut alkanes was from bare minerals. So you do need silicones to help spread the foundation across the skin, which will help you achieve the coverage that you need. Also, let's factor in the sunscreen. So this is supposed to be SPF 20, and if you're not aware, SPF is calculated by using two milligrams per centimeter squared of your face. So it is weight-based. Remember, this is a very lightweight foundation. So to achieve that weight, you would need a lot more volume wise than you would have something else. And it's just very unrealistic that anybody is gonna actually achieve this SPF 20. There's nothing to create a barrier on the skin, such as with silicones, which will allow it to keep the oils at bay. So that's pretty much the main problems. The main ingredients are way too lightweight. There's not any silicones or things that are able to be substituted for silicones that will allow your skin to not get oily and will allow this to spread as it should. The fourth lowest rated foundation from Sephora is the Natasha Denona Transformative Pore Vanishing Matte Foundation. So let's see what people say. A complete fail for me, unfortunately, goes on beautifully, but after a couple hours, dries up like old paint and starts cracking. There's another person, I've tried everything with this foundation. I wanted to like it, but it's truly the worst I've ever had. And it says even when moisturizing, using primer, sunscreen, brush, sponge, nothing. There's no combination that does not make their skin look dry, patchy, and uneven. And another one, it did not work for me. I have oily skin, and while the color was an excellent match, the foundation itself was terrible. It showed pores like crazy. Even with the primer, and it dries very quickly, and when they add, went to add another layer on top of the T-zone, the new layer just picked up the previous layer and left it looking very cakey. Does not blend well, very little oil control, shows pores and fine lines. So it seems to be patchy, it's drying too fast, it's showing fine lines. After water, the next ingredient is isododecade. This is an ingredient you'll see in foundations that are matte especially, but a lot of times you'll see it in liquid lipsticks and it evaporates very readily. It's a solvent which means it dissolves these other ingredients and allows it to very quickly evaporate. 
For a foundation, sometimes you have to work with it a lot quicker because this isododecane evaporates very, very quickly. And that's why it's gonna be patchy because you can't work with it fast enough to spread it all over the face. There's also trisiloxane, which also evaporates very easily. And I think part of the reason with it not layering well is because there are a lot of film formers in here. So a lot of times you'll add film formers to kind of make it more long wearing. In this case, there's a lot of them. So you have this film on top of your skin and other things aren't gonna add nicely on it that are liquids. And my best guess at why it's still breaking up regardless of having these film formers throughout the day from oils is mica is very high on this list. We don't know how high it is in a lot of other formulas because it's usually put with the colorants, but in this case we can see it is the fourth ingredient and maybe there is enough of it in there. There's so much of it in there. And mica is oil soluble, so if you have oils coming through on your face, the mica is gonna dissolve and that might be why it starts breaking up throughout the day. The next foundation is from Jouer Cosmetics and it is the Essential High Coverage Creme Foundation. People said I wanted this foundation to work for me so bad. Unfortunately, it was a definite bust. I tried several times with different primers. It looked great when it was first applied and after 10 minutes you could see dry patches. About halfway through the day, it just looked like it was melting off and I don't have very oily skin. So very similar to that Natasha Denona one. And if they touched their face at all, all of the foundation in that spot would come off. And then another person, worst foundation I've ever gotten. I wanted to love it because the amount of coverage, but it doesn't stay. It's a very transferable foundation. If you start sweating, it says it looks terrible. The last person said it clings to every dry patch pores. So it looks like it doesn't last very long. It's very liquidy according to these people. It's high coverage but it also makes you look dry. So, so when we look at this, it's also isododecane based. So it's also gonna evaporate very quickly and that's probably why people are seeing dry patches after they put it on. Once that isododecane has evaporated, now you are left with how your foundation is gonna look for the rest of the day. People, and it also has cyclopentasiloxane as well, but that's a little lower down the list. Now there's a lot of, there's a lot of dimethicone and silicone ingredients which can also get dispersed by oil not necessarily dissolve they don't dissolve in oil but they can get dispersed in oil and that's why i think maybe people are starting to see a breakup the reason why people are getting transfer if you remember those film former ingredients the those in this formula are very very low and probably have very little effect on the formula and those allow that layer to be created so it doesn't transfer. This doesn't really have that. It, and the, I think the fact that it doesn't have those polymers is why this is starting to break up because you're removing parts of the foundation. So the lack of those film formers is making this not transfer proof. After the isododecade is dimethicone and phenyl trimethicone, which my, might be why people think their foundation also feels dry is because these are gonna give that feeling like a poor vanishing primer might do. And it's trying to cling to these patches because the skin isn't hydrated and the isododecane also doesn't help that, if that makes sense. The second worst foundation at Sephora is Pretty Vulgar's Cool AF Lava Water Foundation. Someone said they were very excited to try this foundation. It didn't work. Patchy, oxidizing, and transfer. They tried to apply it differently. And someone said it was the worst foundation they ever tried. It dries down fast. They had to. They had no time to blend. And it left their skin with a lot of texture. Now we're going to look at this one again, and you're going to see a pattern here. This one has isododecane as the third ingredient, so it's a little lower on the list. But if you are going to use a foundation with isododecane, you have to have your skin be as hydrated as possible because there are some people who do really like these foundations. There's a lot of five star reviews, but there just happens to be a lot of people who also don't like this foundation. If isododecane is going to be in your foundation, make sure that you're very, very hydrated. And then after the cyclopentasiloxane and the isododecane in water, all of which are gonna evaporate, the water kinda of might get absorbed by your skin a little bit, but you have the iron oxides that are the next highest. So that is also gonna lend itself to kind of look oxidizing when really it's just drying down. And cyclopentasiloxane is slightly hazy as an ingredient, so when it does evaporate, it may leave you with a darker color than you, than you had 
thought it was when you initially put it on. And because of these, you're also going to have to work faster or it's going to look very patchy because you couldn't blend it out quick enough. We're seeing this as a very common thing here with a lot of these worst foundations. It's also followed up by dimethicone, but nothing to hydrate the skin, butylene glycol, glycerin. These things will help contribute to not giving such a dry feeling to the skin. And then that way your foundation won't stick to the dry patches and fine lines. The Becca No Pigment Foundation, the Zero Foundation was also on this list, but I've already discussed that before and it's not a real foundation in my mind, so we're not going to talk about it right now. I did do a video on it if you want to click that up above go check out my thoughts on that. And the last foundation we're talking about, the worst foundation at Sephora, is the Natasha Denona Face Glow Foundation. Poor Natasha Denona. She had two foundations on here. That sucks, especially because everyone loves her eyeshadows. Clearly foundation's not their thing. Um, so someone said that it used to be their favorite foundation, but the consistency is different now. It's very liquidy. And they said it separated and turned to liquid. So something was going on after they reformulated it, I guess. Let's see. And it's also supposed to be a glowy foundation, but there's only, but there's mica, but only very low on the list. It's below phenoxyethanol, which is a preservative. So you know there's very little in here. So I don't think it's gonna have much glow to it either. And also the separating in this means it doesn't have enough emulsifiers. These are what helps keep the formula from separating over time. And there's also ingredients to help suspend the pigments. And the main one that I am most familiar with is also very, very low on this list. So that's probably what is leading to the separation, the liquidiness, and a lot of people have said it seems to change. Apparently people really liked this before, but sadly, it just, it just it was a flop. So one thing we've noticed is a lot of these have isododecane. And it's not my favorite for a foundation high up on the list, but if my skin is really hydrated, if I really moisturize my skin beforehand, so usually they look very nice and have a very skin-like finish to them because they are more lightweight, but they do dry very quickly. So if it has isododecane, make sure you work with it very fast or in very small sections. So I hope if maybe you were having a similar problem with your foundation or you've tried any of these and didn't know why you didn't like it, that this provided some insight for you. If there's any other products that you want me to look into the worst of at Sephora or Ulta or wherever, just leave it down below and don't forget to subscribe so we can talk more about the science behind your makeup and skincare. With that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!